Dear Church. Dear Church. We're standing with one spirit together, and we will sing. All praise to Jesus, our Savior, the, the King, King of Kings. Kings. He is holy, worthy, God Almighty. We sing praise thee, our God. All right, good morning, everybody. Good morning. Hello, my name is Hendro, and I'm so glad to see all of you here today, whether you are here on site or you are watching us online. I want to say thank you for joining us. We are so glad to see you here again. I want to say a special welcome to our first timers. Well, we hope that you have a great time here with us, and we'll come back again next week for a better sermon. <laughs> all right. Here at English Worship, uh, we always say that we want to empower you to pursue your God-given purpose in God's global plan. And when we say that, we really mean it. So please, after the service, if you would like to know more about our community, want to go deep uh, to involve in our community, please come and talk to one of our leaders here at English Worship. And also, you can participate in our Natalan, December 16. That will be a great time, so come to our Natalan. Anyway, uh, to kick off our um, sermon for today, I would like to share uh, two pictures for you today. So here's the first picture. Okay, does anyone know this person? How about this one? Yeah, I see like some of you kind of like know, yeah? So the first picture is Daryl Kyle. Derrick Kyle was a well-known athlete in Major League Baseball. He was an American professional baseball starting pitcher. Kyle was known for his sharp, big-breaking curveball, you know? And the second picture, which some of you kind of know or have seen his picture, you know? He was, uh, his name is Ashraf Sinclair. His uh, late husband of the Bunga Chitra Lestari, yeah? He was best known for his work as an actor and model in entertainment industries of Malaysia and Indonesia. Because of his charm and good looks, made him a quite popular uh, public figure across Southeast Asia. What did Kyle and Sinclair have in common? The most striking similarity is that both individual passed away due to heart attacks. They both died unexpectedly at relatively young ages. So Kyle died uh, when he was 33 years old and um, Sinclair was 40. Both Kyle and Sinclair appeared to be healthy on the outside, you know, like being diligent in sports, looking good, super fit, which makes their sudden deaths even more tragic and shocking. This phenomena, I thought this highlights, uh, has an important point about health. Sometimes outward appearances do not reflect what's going on internally. Appearances can be deceiving. Appearances can be deceiving. On the outside, everything looks great, you know, but on the inside, something can seriously wrong. You can go to see a doctor and run a test, so you can get a pretty accurate picture of your physical health. But how do you do that spiritually? How do you do that spiritually? How do you know if outwardly your faith looks so strong, but inwardly your heart has wandered from God? We have come to the last part of the series, Dear Church where we have learned and explored the letter written to the Ephesians. Today, I'm given the honorable opportunity to bring a message to all of us. Uh, so thank you, Pastor Jimmy, for uh, that privilege. So I will finish our journey studying the letter to the church in Ephesus, but not in the book of Ephesians, but in the book of Revelation. 
In the book of Revelation, chapters 2 and 3 contain seven letters um, from Jesus that were sent to the seven first century churches. In those letters, he evaluates, yeah, um, evaluates each church. And that letters share a similar structure, antara lain. One, an address to particular congregation. Second, an, um, an introduction of Jesus. A statement regarding the conditions of the church. Verdict from Jesus regarding the condition of the church. A command from Jesus to the church. A general exhortation to all Christians. And the last one is a promise of reward. So we can see the condition of each church and the state of our own walk faith yeah, with Jesus by looking at what Jesus has today uh, to say to each churches. But now our main focus will be the letter to the church in Ephesus. Let's open our Bible and read Revelation 2, verse 1 to 7. Let's open our Bible. But before that, let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you for today. We want to invite Holy Spirit to speak to us. Give us understanding and new perspective about everything that you want to say to us today. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. All right, Revelation 2, verse 1 to 7. If you find it, say amen. amen. Wow, you guys are fast. Okay, maybe because it's on the screen, I don't know. Okay, so the first, uh, first verse, it says, To the angel of the church in Ephesus write, These are the words of him who holds the seven stars in his right hand and walks among the seven golden lampstands. So these images, yeah, seven stars, uh, walks in the midst of the seven golden lampstands, were taken from John's vision of Jesus in Revelation 1. The book of Revelation is written by John, okay, just in case you don't know. So they emphasize the authority of Jesus. That's what it means of he holds the seven stars, meaning that Jesus has the authority of each churches. And his immediate presence in the church, meaning that he walks in the midst of the seven golden lampstands. That's what it means, his presence. So this introduction emphasized that Jesus is the central at the church and should be recognized as the central to the church. Yeah, at least you got the picture of the first one. Now we're going to continue to the sec uh, first second. I know your deeds. This is Jesus said. Your hard work and your perseverance. I know that you cannot tolerate wicked people, that you have tasted those who claim to be apostles but are not, and have found them false. Verse 3, you have persevered and have endured hardships for my name and have not grown weary. That's amazing. What a compliment from Jesus to the church. Yeah, if you're taking notes, this is your first point. The first one, he commands. He commands. I know your deeds. Jesus looked at his church and he knew exactly what's going on in the church. It was no mystery for him. There may be sin or uh, corruption hidden in a congregation, but it isn't hidden to Jesus. Jesus praises the efficient church for their diligent labor and commitment to a doctrinal purity. He acknowledges their hard work in the face of persecution, their ability to identify false teachers, and their unwillingness to tolerate evil. Not only that, teman -teman, Jesus offers a personal compliment regarding their endurance. He highlights their perseverance for his namesake, stating that they have endured hardship for my name and have not grown weary. This is a more uh, personal note of encouragement, showing that God honors not just the action, but the heart behind the actions. Yeah, God honors not just the actions, but at the heart behind the actions. It is a reminder that even when efforts feel unnoticed or unrewarded by others, God is pleased with the persistence of faith. I believe he would say the same thing for us today, both as individuals, maupun as a congregation. I know your deeds, 
I know your works. I see you. Radia, I saw how you serve in the media. You minister silently and don't seek the spotlight. Chicha, I saw how you serve in the Connect team. I know you have a lot of things going on in your mind, but you have come in and give your best smile and your warmest greeting. Claudia, I know how you give your best when you serve in the worship team. You come earlier than others. You give your all, preparing everything so that all of us can feel his presence. I see how generous you guys are in giving. I believe that God, Jesus would say that to us today. And in Hebrew uh, 6, verse 10, the writer says that God is not unjust. He will not forget your work and the love that you have shown him as you have helped his people and continue to help them. This verse reassures us that God sees, God acknowledges the good work we do in his name, especially our love and service to others. Nothing we do is in vain. Mengapa? Because remember this, Jesus values your work even when no one else does. Jesus values your work even no one else does. Last month, I celebrate my uh, 29th birthday. Um, I'm very grateful, not 29 for the second round, but the first round. I'm very grateful for being given the opportunity to live by the Lord Jesus, to be a blessing and do good things. But there is one thing that I'm extremely grateful for, which is that I didn't celebrate my birthday alone. I have a community that celebrates my birthday and also my girlfriend, Sophie. So, Sophie is very sweet. She's very caring. I never found anyone in my life that's so soft-hearted, except my mom. Yeah, Sophie's great, yeah? So last month, we celebrated my birthday in such a simple but meaningful way. It was awesome. I was over the moon, you know? And I even thought, wow, this is what it looks like to have a girlfriend. <laughs> it's like walking in the park, walking in the park. That's so good, that's so good. Not only I celebrated my birthday, later, the week, later that week I received an invitation from the badminton club that I joined to represent them in Salatiga. So there was a friendly competition with one of the clubs there. So I was one of the people that got invited and I felt honored to be invited even though like my skill is like biasa-biasa saja, you know? <laughs> I thought it was a good thing. I thought it was a good thing and at the same time, I could create a core memory yeah, that I can do before I reach the age of 30. After all, the last time I think I went to Salatiga was 10 years ago. Uh, it was a long time ago. So because of this, I cannot wait to tell Sophie. So finally, the time has arrived. I told Sophie, hey, sayang. <laughs> I got a chance to go to Salatiga. And guess what? It is for a badminton competition. Come on, you know? So I have to go there on Saturday morning because the event starts uh, on Saturday afternoon and lasts until Sunday. Because of this, I knew that I could not spend time together with Sophie. So I needed to let her know, yeah? Expecting an encouraging response, <laughs> I got a lot of questions instead. <laughs> so. Sophie started asking, what are you living on? Who is going there with you? Where will you sleep? Are you on duty on Sunday? And so on and so on. These were all good questions, right? Yeah. Right. But the problem is, I couldn't give answers that satisfied her. <laughs> I started to feel bad. Oh no, she seemed unsure if I should go to Salatiga. The feeling that I expressed before at the beginning about the feeling of having a girlfriend is like walking in the park. It is true. It's like walking in a park. Jurassic Park. 
you know? Because you're so afraid of that, you know, like... <sighs> and it turned out to be true. She was not ex excited as I was about the competition. But not because of my inability to answer her questions, but because she felt that I was losing my attention to her. Woo! <laughs> so the second point is this. He confronts. Okay? He confronts. While commanding them or praising the, the condition of the church in Ephesus, Jesus confronts of the things that they have uh, about the one thing that they forgot to do or something that they have forsaken. And that is the love for him. In verse 4, it says that, Yet I hold this against you. You have forsaken the love you had at first. Sophie did not disapprove of me going to Salatiga. Rather, she, uh, she questioned my commitment to our relationship. She, she felt I was putting badminton ahead of our relationship. I had invested so much in sport from my time, my money, my energy, and even my heart. For Sophie, going out for dinner or something or spending time together with her, it's something that's very important to her. And she didn't see me showing that in those days. Sophie was sad to see that because I didn't realize it. So when she confronted me, I was like, hello, Mera, darling. Don't you see my sacrifices in picking you up? Don't you see me doing things to make your job easier? Don't you realize the attention that I give to you by buy you things? I thought that doing all of this thing would show my affection to her. Turns out I was wrong. Sophie's love languages is not um, gift nor words of affirmation. She has that love languages, tapi it's not the most dominant one. The most dominant one is quality time, spending time together with her. So Sophie said to me, Hendro, you know what I need, but why don't you show me? Our relationship with God is probably the same as my story with Sophie. We know what God wants, but we forget, or we pretend to forget. We ignore what God wants in favor of what we think God wants. We ignore what God wants in favor of what we think God wants. Kaliru, Bapak Ibu. We get to carry it away with motions. Do you guys remember the story of Mary and Martha in Luke 10? Surely this, is, this story is very familiar to all of us. Yeah? So this passage tells a story of Martha and Mary. So where Martha was busy with hospitality task while Mary, you know, just chilling, just sat at the feet of Jesus and listened to him. That's awesome, be Mary, yeah? Okay. Martha, but the other hand, Martha became frustrated with her sister, and he asked Jesus to intervene. But what, the, uh, what Jesus responded? Jesus gently rebuked Martha, and he said, Martha, Martha, memang, you are anxious. You troubled about many things, but one thing is important. Mary has chosen the good part, which is will not be taken away from her. Martha's destruction serves as a metaphor for how we be, can become so caught up in good works that we neglect the central importance of being with Jesus. Yeah. This is the same in uh, the book of Revelation. Uh, the church in Ephesus, man, they were busy with good deeds, but has allowed those actions to repent place their first love for Christ, which should be their primary focus, right? The confrontation Jesus has highlights that correct doctrine is not enough to make a church strong. 
Correct doctrine is not enough to make a church strong, not even when accompanied by a good works. We can make people here feel welcome. We can fill this room with a lot of people. But lost our first love for God? We don't want that. No amounts of good deeds can replace a passionate love for Christ. Don't get me wrong. Good deeds are necessary, but can never replace a passionate love for Christ. Good deeds are necessary, but can never replace a passionate love for Christ. The confrontation urges the church to examine their hearts, pointing out that uh, outward righteousness must be grounded in an inward, uh, in inward affection for Jesus. It challenges us to ask, can we be busy serving God but neglect the very reason for our service, our love for Christ? The confrontation is a call. It's a call to examine the state, the condition of our hearts. Two things we learn from the scripture, Revelation 2, verse 1 until 7. One, he commands. The second one, he confronts. And number three, or the last one, he calls to repentance. Yeah, you see, H-E-H-C, you know, I can be the pastor next. But <laughs> Okay, um, we all fall short before God. We have forgotten our first love with God, and maybe some of us are experiencing it now. We don't want to be in this position forever. We don't want to, right? We must bunk it. We must raise up. Setuju nggak, Bapak Ibu? Yeah. But then the question, how do we do it? How do we do it? In verse 5, Jesus gives a clear command. Let's uh, see verse 5. Let's read it together. Consider how far you have fallen. Repent and do the things you did at first. Everyone say, repent. Good. This is a loving yet urgent invitation to return to the love they once had for Christ. This is not a command to feel sorry or really to feel anything, but this command means to change our direction. When we go here, he said like, hey, go a different way, so I'm going to go over here instead. In verse 5, Jesus said, repent and do the First thing, uh, do the things you did at first. Another translation, they say that do the first works. Do the first works. What does it mean? It means we must go back to the basic. To the very first things you did when you first fell in love with Jesus. So what are the first works? Remember how you used to spend time in his word? Remember how you used to pray? Remember the joy in getting together with other Christians? You guys remember that? And remember how excited you were about telling others about Jesus? We all are called to turn from mere formality and return to passionate relationship with Christ. Being a Christian doesn't mean just doing a lot of things for God. Karna, the essence, the essence of being a Christian is loving Jesus. Jesus said to the Pharisees in John 8, if God, if God were your father, you would love me. If God were your father, you would love me. As a good boyfriend, or whatever status we have, yeah, more jomblo, or more married, or whatever, we want to change. So we make a commitment to become better. That's how we show that we are being serious in this relationship, about our commitment to our partner or our spouse. Do the first works. Do the first works. But then, Hendro, what if... What happened if we are not 
answers his calls to repentance? What if he's still calling, you know, missed call for 15 times? Like sometimes like my mom called me, but I always missed his call. So forgive me, mom. Yeah. Um, Jesus said that, I will come to you. I will come to you and remove your lampstand from its place. I will come to you and remove your lampstand from its place. Um, every house, every home right now, they use prepaid electricity, yeah? which allow them to control their usage, pemakaian, and how much they will spend on electricity. In Ambon, where I live, most houses do not use tokens. So they still use postpaid electricity. The most important thing for us postpaid electricity users is to pay on time. When we pay late, PLN will come to our house and cut off our electricity. If the electricity is cut off, there is no light. I mean, the, the Ambon, in Ambon, there's no electricity. Sometimes like it's always dark, and now we don't pay, we pay late, it's cut off our electricity, I do, <laughs> yeah? There is no light, and when there's no light, our activities are, are disrupted. So when I read this verse, I imagine Jesus as a PLN guy <laughs> who comes to each of our houses and cuts off our electricity. They belong, eh, telat bayar, telat bayar, telat bayar, you know? And we don't want that. We don't want our electricity to be cut off. Worship him, uh, you guys can come on up and help me close. Jesus says, he will remove our lampstand from its place unless we repent. Unless we repent, he will remove our lights and his presence. That is the meaning of the lampstands that Jesus was referring to, his presence. When our lampstand is removed, we can continue as an organization, but no longer as a true church of Jesus Christ. When our lamp is removed, we can have a thousand people here, but still just be a crowd, not a community of Christ. It would be the church of Ichabod, I hope that I pronounce it right, where the glory had departed in 1 Samuel uh, Chapter 4, verse 21, the church of Ichabod, the glory had departed. In verse 2, Jesus said, Whoever has ears, let them hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To the one who is victorious, I will give you the right to eat from the tree of life, which is in the paradise of God. This letter was not only written to the church at Ephesus. It is written to us. This message is for us, all the Christians, through our generations. There is a, one book uh, by Leanda Lien Haupt called Rare Encounters with Ordinary Birds. I have the picture, just in case you want to look it up. So, Mrs. Haupt is a naturalist and master bearder. By the way, I don't know apa itu, master bearder and everything, but I think it's a good thing, you know? So, while working with youth who were interested in bearding, she met a high school student by the name of Joshua. Not Joshua any, by the way, yeah? So, she was quickly impressed by the love that this young man had for birds and bearding. He told her, I want to do anything about birds, anything. When he said that, she chuckled at his enthusiasm. Enthusiasm. She said, when he gets going about birds, he talks extremely fast, forgets to swallow, the breezes get in the way, and he sort of spits like what I'm doing right now. So, yeah. One day, they went out on a boat in a freezing cold to spot some birds. And this young man, Joshua, showed up, all dressed up in a winter coat 
and a face mask to protect his face from the freezing weather. Why would he do that? Why would he do that? She wrote, Joshua building pursuits spring from the soul, from a kind of true love, not a love from money, not a love of money or material things or enhanced social standing, but just love. Love of doing a thing. And there is so much to learn from such a young love. When was the last time you had a quiet time with God? When was the last time you really prayed? When was the last time you prayed together as a family? When was the last time you've prayed with your spouse? When was the last time you sing praises to God? And when was the last time you told others about Jesus? He wants you back. He wants us back. He wants you to love Him with all our heart, our soul, and mind, and might. And do the things we used to do because we love Him. Because we love Him. Get back to that first love. Get back to that first love. The love that leads you to do anything Jesus wants. Be like that young man of Joshua who said, if has to do anything with birds, I will do it. Let's have that attitude. If it has to do with Jesus, I will do it. If it has to do with Jesus, I will do it because I love him, because I love him. The Lord wants to see that from you again. If that's you, confess, ask for forgiveness, and do the first works. Here, I would like to um, invite you guys to pray on your own. You see, like, where are you right now? Are you at the feet of Jesus? Or have you wandered away from his presence? Close your eyes. Close your eyes. Confess. Say, Jesus, I have wandered away from your presence. I want to feel that love again. I want to do the first works. Sorry that I neglect that first love. If that's you, you that have wandered away, I want to pray for you. I want to pray for all of us today. Father in heaven, Lord, thank you that you loved us first. Thank you that your love is so perfect. Even though we are not perfect, but you still love us unconditionally. Lord, we have been wandered away from your presence. We know that you want us to do this, to spend time with you, but we neglect that. We thought that doing other things would please you, but actually not. You just want us to be with you, to spend time with you. We ask for forgiveness right now, Lord. Would you give us strength so that we can love again? so we can love again. Amen. Can we uh, sing the King of Glory first one? Yes, the world will bow down and say you are God. Every man will bow down and say you are King. So let's start right Praise. Let's stand up together. Let's sing it together. 
it has to do with Jesus I will do it because I love him he wants our hearts back again he created us wonderfully made and he doesn't want us to to go to some places that that were not belong he wants us in his presence friends if you confess, ask for forgiveness, and do the first works, there is a great promise at the end of the story for the one who is victorious. For those who overcome the coldness of their heart and come back to the first love. My prayer for all of us today is that we become overcomers. We remain the true church of Jesus Christ where his presence dwells amongst us all. Thank you, everybody. Let's sing this together. King of glory. Hallelujah. King of glory. King of glory. So here's how I want us to close today. Is that I realize in this community, at this church, being a young adult or a Mahasiswa man, we're busy. I mean, you got, you got good things you're doing, right? You're working. Well, some of you would say that's not good. But I mean, get, having it, you're working. You're going to school. I mean, so many of you are coming early to volunteer. So many of you are staying today to help deck. Man, you're, you're busy like this. You're doing all these good works. And I, and I love how Hendro said, man, he commends that. He, the Lord recognizes the good works. But I realize that sometimes, man, we just get, we just get busy doing. We forget about the Lord. <laughs> we get so busy working for the Lord that we don't spend time with the Lord. So today I just want to pray for you. To say, Lord, capture my heart again. Capture my heart. I don't want to just work for you, Lord. I want to, I want to walk with you, Lord. Yes. So let's just close our eyes today. If that's you, if you'd say, man, I, I want to walk with the Lord today. Just lift your hand to God and say, God, here I am. God, my heart or my actions have taken, oh, my actions have grown bigger than my heart, Lord. And today, I want a big heart for you, God. I want my, 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 my heart to be captured once again by you, Lord. Oh, God, capture our hearts. Work inside, God. God, you see our hands lifted. You, you hear our prayers, God. Today, God, we even say, God, we repent that we've put other things, we've put our, our deeds, our good things in front of you. So, Lord, today, today we pause we say, Lord, once again, once again, Lord, capture our hearts. Capture our hearts, Lord. King of glory. King of glory. Feel this place. We just want to be with you. 
Let's do that now. Let's lift our hands to God and make it our prayer today. Oh, God. Oh, God, let my heart be that today. King of glory. Capture my heart, God. Maybe you feel far from the Lord today. Go ahead, just, just pray out. Just call out to the Lord today and say, God, here I am, Lord. Here just I am, Lord. Sing hallelujah. So be sing hallelujah until you come again. We'll dance in your presence, dance in your presence until you come. Oh, we want to come back to the one moment with you, Lord. Sing hallelujah until you come. Oh, and we'll dance in your presence, dance in your presence. Dance in your presence, King of the glory, King of glory, feel this place. Just wanna be Just with wanna you, be with you, only you, Jesus. Just wanna be with you. I want us to, to get this today. And thanks, Hendro, so much for sharing today. And you can tell Hendro's my disciple. He commends, he corrects, and what was the third one? He calls. That's right. I love it. Alliteration. That's the language of the Holy Spirit. He speaks like that. At least he speaks to me like that. All right, so... Man, let's leave today. No one, man, that, man, it's good. What you're doing, it's good, all right? Well, actually, if you're not doing good stuff, change that, all right? All right, some, some of you guys do need to repent and change your actions, all right? But most of y'all in here, man, the Lord recognizes it. But let's not get so caught up in doing the good that we forget about the great, the greatness of God, his work in our lives. So if you need to pray with someone today and say, Lord, I, I just need God to capture my heart again. Some of you need to make the commitment tomorrow morning when you wake up. Man, you need to get in the scriptures. You need to learn how to pray. You need to walk, like walking with Jesus alone in your personal life. Man, let's get those things right. But I love it that he sees the good works. But he's calling for something greater than that. So let's be the great people of God and not just the good workers for God. Would you lift your hands to receive the blessing of God today? Father in heaven, I thank you that you are the good God and you see the good things we do, but you call us to greater things, God. You want our heart, you want our affection and to allow things to flow from that. So Lord, we, we, we surrender our hearts, we surrender our actions, we surrender our attitude to you now and say, God, capture it once again, Lord. Be our first love once again, Lord. If we've drifted away from that, oh God, capture our hearts. Become, become our first love once again, Lord. We pray for that today. I pray blessings over my friends that this week they would walk with you and they would know your presence. I pray you'd bless their finances, that everyone here would know the provision of God, that they'd be blessed so they can be a blessing to others. I pray you'd bless their fr friends and families, that everywhere they go and everyone they meet would sense the presence of God is with them. And more than anything, I pray you'd bless their future, that everyone here would know their greatest days are still in front of them. Bless them now in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we pray. And everyone says together, Amen, amen. Thank you for being at English Worship today. Man, go with God. If you need someone to pray with, there's going to be leaders up here in the front uh, to pray with you. If you need to pray with someone in your seat, you can do that. If not, God bless you guys. Thanks for being here. You're dismissed. God bless you guys.